What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. Isaiah here. As promised, we're going to do a real quick, shorty video about how to build your character for Rusty Dagger from Rob Salters. Uh, first step we need is the Hero Rules booklet. We need our character sheet. We need the references for our titles, which are the classes in the game, so that you can look through the abilities and kind of get a feel for where the character will be heading and what types of things you might be able to do down the road. And of course, we need a pencil. So we got our sheet set up. I had to put a board under it, a little binder under it so that I could uh, write comfortably. So step one, we have some stats that we want to assign. We have the array of four, seven, seven, nine, eleven, and we're gonna pick where those go between health, combat, knowledge, judgment, and personality. So when you look at the main stats, there are substats underneath them. Your starting health is determined by your health. So I have have been going with the eleven there because I'm a face basher. And I, I want to have high health so that I can feel comfortable getting into the mix, as it were. Um, the subsets under there will determine how well you dodge things under combat, how well you fight under knowledge and wisdom, or under knowledge, judgment, and personality. These Those are used for various types of checks, Narr usually things within the narrative challenges. So I'm gonna go ahead and array my stats. Also, just as a good measure, as a good thing on Rob, he puts the stat array on the character sheet at the top, and he also put the modifiers on the character sheet that you get for having the different attributes, and I think that's just a real, real, real classy move on your part, Rob. All right, well, so I have my stats arranged with the 11 in health, the 9 in combat, a 4 in knowledge, and the 7s in judgment and personality. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty slick talker. I'm just not super bright. Now, once those are assigned, we go in and you take that number and you divide it however you choose among the stat, the sub, ooh, excuse me, the substats that are there. Um, your trait modifiers are down here. So at zero to one, you have a minus two. At two to three, a minus one. At four to five, a zero modifier. Six to seven is a plus one. Eight to 10 is a plus two. 11 to 13, a plus three. 14 to seven, plus four. And 18 plus is five plus to your modifiers, which is pretty much God mode at that point, I would think, because you're rolling 2d6. Okay, so I've divided up here. Um, Seven on my brawn, four on my agility. Brawn is for dodging melee attacks. Agility is for dodging ranged attacks. Zero on my archery. I can't shoot. I'm a face smasher, so I've got nine to my swordsmanship. On my knowledge wise, I know a little bit about how to survive off the land and, and you know get by. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Probably not gonna thrive, but I'm probably also not gonna eat something that's gonna kill me. But I know nothing about the arcane. That's just a complete mystery to me. Um, I am not very wise. However, I am quite lucky. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, you know. And down here, um, I'm very open. And, and talkative when I meet people. I'm not a very good liar, but I am a very, very blunt-ish individual. So my candor is pretty, very high, pretty, you know, above, slightly above average, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not a good liar. I'm okay with that. I don't need to lie. I got a big sword and some big arms to swing. A new hero starts with 15 wealth, and on the back of the book is kind of the general store of things that you can purchase to begin your mission, to start the character. Starting to have up to five items in your possession at a time. If it's a weapon, however, it I think it doesn't count against your yes. characteristics. Weapons that are identified by WP in their stat line do not count against your maximum number of possessions, but you can only carry three of those at a time. So technically, you could have up to eight things in your melee possession. weapons and attacks like that. Obviously, you just have to be in or an orthogonal, so a left, right, up, down, space to your opponent. Um, range weapons will have R and then a number which tells you the range, how many spaces that weapon can Companions shoot. are, as the name suggests, friends or compatriots, allies that you pick up along the way. They hang out for a while. Sometimes they might leave. If they do leave the party, they will take with them any and all items within their possession. The leveling up process. At the end of an adventure, you'll be assigned stat points or SP. And those can be assigned to prime traits. When you adjust the prime trait, you then also adjust 
the sub traits. You start at 38 SP as a level one hero, and as you reach benchmarks, which are on your title description, it will tell you what happens next when you level. You can choose to either select an ability in the new level or select an ability from a previous level. When you're on your adventure, when we see this symbol, this is the camp symbol. And at the campsite, you are allowed to revive companions that have been defeated in combat. You can trade items between models and you can use items. Any number of items can be left at camp to free up your model's possession space and items carry over from adventure to venture. But if you lose an adventure, all player models die and all items at camp are lost. If you have had somebody go down who needs to be revived, it costs five wealth plus their level in wealth. So a level two companion would cost seven wealth to revive. Your hero will revive automatically after a challenge at half its starting health rounded down for a cost of 10 wealth plus the hero's level. If you do not have enough wealth to revive your hero, the adventure is over. And then we come to the general sword. Now I am, as I mentioned in the let me talk at you if you happen to watch that. If you didn't, there's a link to it in the corner right there. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested and see, see hearing a little bit more about the game before we get into playing it. I'm going to take the pet wolf and I'm going to write its stats down right over here. The last step for me is a name and a title. So I'm going to be a mercenary, just a heavy in your face, punch him for money kind of guy. And my name is a shout out to a friend, good friend who recently made a little donation to the channel. Dreyeth will be this mercenary's name. And with that, we are ready to get into the first module, which will be the Spire of the Golem. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel, go over there, check out the link in the description, check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff over there, including access to our Discord server, talk to me, hang out with me, talk about our work, what we got going on in the hobby. Um, some shout outs, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out if that's something that you think you would be into. And regardless of whether or not you do that, I want you to know that I am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.